Can I just say, if you have a dog and you live in a communal area where there's like a communal mm -hmm. pee opportunity, oh, yes. if your dog is finally going, because sometimes it takes 15, 20 minutes oh, to walk yeah. around, right? Mm -hmm. If your dog is finally going, don't bring your dog up to my dog to socialize. Oh. I'm not there to talk to you. No. I'm not there for the dogs to meet. That's not the. That's I'm not, out no. there in my shorts and my flip flops and my dirty hair. Yeah. With one mission. Let my dog go to the bathroom. Did this happen? It happened. <laughs> and I wanted to look at her and go, Martha, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 Roll the <Aww>. <laughs>
and I model orientation. And I walk in this room, and there's nothing but beautiful, pretty people. Just nothing. They're shimmering. Yes. Uh, they haven't eaten a chicken finger since Bill Clinton <laughs> was president. There's nothing. And I'm like, oh, my God, look at these beautiful people. And uh, and, and and then the woman, given the orientation, she goes, okay, now when you uh, go into the next room, there are going to be two rooms. If you're model 1 through 50, I was 50, uh, you're going to go in the sassafras room. Uh, and that's where you're going to change. And if you're anyway, so I go into the sassafras room because they tell you that you're going to have to change uh, in that room to put on your modeling clothes. So they go, we'll text you when you need to report to the sassafras room. So I get my little text and I go to the sassafras room and I walk in and in the middle of this ballroom, there looks like there's like a medical tent. And I'm like, gee, I wonder what that's for. And then I look around and I'm like, are we all getting naked and changed in the same tent <gasps> and I'm like oh no so I immediately had flashbacks to junior high PE class yeah. I'm like I ain't getting naked in front of any I'm not doing it yeah. I don't even change in front of Colin <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? so then I'm thinking oh my god Oh God, what, what am I wearing? Under undergarment rise, what am I wearing? Oh no. And then I start sweating, no joke. Yeah. I start sweating I'm like, okay, I got my, I got man spanks on. And, <laughs> and, then, and then I went, oh God, what boxer brief, <laughs> what, what boxer briefs am I wearing? And I, st I went, oh God. I'm wearing like Mickey Mouse uh, <laughs> boxer. I'm wearing Walt Disney World boxer briefs. Yeah. And I have to know. Now, normally. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking around like Justin Sutherland, a chef Justin Sutherland who's on the show, hot as the day is long. I'm like, I'm not walking around in my Mickey Mouse underwear in front of him. <laughs> so I left. I, I, I went out of the tent, freaked out. And the, the organizer, Jody, goes, Jason, can I help you? I go, um, um, I forgot something. <laughs> and I ran out of the room, and I was looking for a family bathroom. One yeah, of those family yeah, rooms, yeah. a single, to change in. Found one. Oh, lovely. Changed yeah. quicker than I've ever changed in my <laughs> life. Out of my end of the garb and went back in. Yeah. But nightmare scenario for anyone that's had any body image issue. Yeah. I'm like, I ain't getting naked. I ain't no. doing that. No. Isn't it remarkable the people that just don't feel uncomfortable in those scenarios? Like, have you ever been in like a gym locker room and someone has their leg up on yes! a bench and they're lotioning their inner thigh and you're like, you have so much confidence. Yeah, and I <laughs> applaud you. Yeah, but no. We do not. No, I'm looking for a mother's room, a family bathroom. Anything. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Rolling, <laughs> Leo. Here we go. Okay. Well, get ready to lie again. What do I mean? Some exciting news. I had no idea this was coming. For fans of HBO's hit Big Little Lies, this weekend, star and executive producer Nicole Kinman dropped some big news. She just casually told a crowd at a women's professional golf event that work is underway for a third season of the show. Yeah. Now... Kidman didn't go into any details. And if you don't know, she was in it with Reese, uh, Witherspoon, Laura Dern, Zoe Kravitz, and Shalane Woodley. Season two ended more than four years ago. And I didn't even love season two. Mm -mm, so yeah. I wasn't sure. I'm like, I don't know if we needed that. Now I'm really scared. Do we need a season three? Yeah, season one was so good. So good. Season two you watched because you loved season one. And it was like, you're right. It was like, eh. The soundtrack is amazing for both like, the show. But I'll watch it still. Because oh. I watch like everything Reese Witherspoon does. Absolutely. Yeah. I am legit in. Mm -hmm. And I like season two because Meryl Streep. Remember Meryl Streep oh, was yeah. in that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it better be good. They better not have done this for a cash grab. Mm -hmm. They better have a really good story. Maybe that's why it took four years. I hope so. Maybe they realized the last one they did it too quickly, and this time they're putting more time in. Look at you being positive, Holly. Yeah, don't get used it. to it. Yeah. I love that. Let's move on. <laughs> Up next. Up next, my friends, a new Saturday Night Live uh, oh, this weekend aired with Jason Momoa hosting. And one. <laughs> you do it, yeah. I'm loving this. Song. Aaron didn't even cue them to do that, yeah. <laughs> So one of our favorite sketches poked fun at the recent viral trend of men thinking about the Roman Empire several times a day. Look. What you thinking about, baby? Me? I'm just thinking about... Look at our son. You got 
I'm doing it now, too. Broke? Nah, woman. I'm just thinking about dinosaurs, dinosaurs, all about dinosaurs. Big so good. The show, the show also got into the Thanksgiving spirit, offering up a new version of a Thanksgiving Day parade. You know, instead of Macy's, but this parade focused on familiar people at the airport. Look. All right, coming up now is a TSA agent shouting the same thing twelve different ways. Laptop out the bag. Laptop out the bag. If you got a laptop in the bag, go ahead and take it on out. Sir, are you enjoying the parade? Laptop out the bag. Wonderful. Oh, now we have one last surprise performance by the only people who are happy to be working this week. It's the gay flight attendants who are estranged from their families. My chosen family is my co-workers, and my chosen home is Mikono. <laughs> Look, I'm not, I, I know, when I go to headquarters, they keep a tally of what uh, jobs are popular with gays. Uh, it's number one, our national occupation is in fact flight attendant, <laughs> and the second one is TV meteorologist. <laughs> <laughs> it is! <laughs> it is! I, Look across the country, it's my people's work! <laughs> People's work to tell you if there's a low pressure system coming for it. <laughs> so I'm telling you. <laughs> Spin the dial, you'll see. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. Poo tacky tacky for the win. Yeah. As we told you last week, John Oliver's pick for the New Zealand Bird of the Century contest <laughs> easily won. Easily won. And last night, John took a, a winner's lap here. Look at this. even close. This shows the amount of voters the runners-up got from the fantail on 7,800 to the second place Kiwi at just 13,000. But the poo tiki tiki soared to victory with more than 290,000 votes. Yes, it's true. 290,000 votes. For context, the poo tiki tiki got over three times as many votes by itself as all the other top ten birds combined. When you talk about historic all-time levels of dominance, the conversation now begins and ends with Michael Jordan, Lionel Messi, Serena Williams, and the poo tiki tiki. Those are now the goats, the best to ever do it, no one else even comes close. Apparently, verified votes were cast in 195 countries. That is two more than the current membership of the United States. <laughs> Congratulations, John. That is hysterical. It's hilarious. I, I love, it. love it. Never has so much attention been played, paid to the bird of the century or the no. poo tacky tacky. Never heard of the contest. Never heard of the bird no. until that moment. Yeah. I want that. I want that uh, costume. I want a poo tacky tacky <laughs> costume. Where yeah. would you wear that? You I think? wouldn't wear it. I'd give it to photographer Eric. Oh, Are you right, kidding me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Seriously, he'd wear it. Next up, Famous Faces head up Las Vegas for Formula One, and Taylor Swift makes a really hard decision. Joining me live with those stories and more is our good buddy. Give it up for Brad from TMZ. Good morning, Hi, Jason. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Okay, let's start. Uh, extreme heat caused uh, T. Swift to cancel a concert in Brazil this weekend, but there were so many aspects to the story. Tell the folks what happened. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was really dangerous conditions over the weekend for anyone to put on a show. But when you think of Taylor Swift fans and how many people uh, get packed into those arenas, uh, it kind of added a new level. Uh, Taylor announced over the weekend one of her several shows in Brazil she had to cancel because of extreme heat and weather. She said, look, I can fight through shows. I can do it. But once it gets really tough for the fans is when I have to make this tough decision. Um, should also note that one of Taylor's fans actually passed away.
before one of those shows in Brazil's Brazil. A uh, lot of questions surrounding the death, but it is believed that that is condition and weather related to uh, whether that caused some sort of medical emergency or what. But Taylor herself, even during the shows over the weekend, you could see her at times really struggling to catch her breath uh, because of the extreme heat and the humidity there. So it uh, makes a lot of sense why she had to make that tough decision. Yeah, and she, you know, she pulled an Adele where it, she stopped the show and was like, get some water to these. I, it's Brazil. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It's bad. Yeah, she, she was handing waters out herself, which is uh, always kind of ridiculous to see when the venue kind of knows the risks associated. Absolutely. Next, uh, we are following this. This is just on uh, Diddy settled a lawsuit from an ex-girlfriend just a couple days after it was filed. What do we know about this? Yeah, I mean, these were shocking allegations because if you know Cassie and you know Diddy, you know that they dated for a long time. And uh, she kind of became a singer and a star as she was dating him. You thought everything was okay between the two of them uh, uh, before their breakup, but she has filed this lawsuit with allegations of, of drug abuse, said that he was controlling uh, sexual abuse as well. It was a $30 million lawsuit, and uh, within just a couple days, as you mentioned, uh, it was settled. So we don't know uh, how much he paid her, or what he had to pay her, or if he paid her at all. You'd have to assume that it was some sort of settlement to that degree. Uh, but these allegations are going to be tough uh, for anyone to forget about, that's for sure. Without a doubt. Finally, Formula One uh, hits Vegas and brings out a ton of famous faces. Who was there? Yeah, I mean, it kind of looked like the Grammys and the Oscars all combined with a car race in the middle of it, Jason, because you had everyone from uh, Shaquille O'Neal was there, Justin Bieber, Rihanna, ASAP Rocky. Uh, I mean, you name it, uh, they were there. A bunch of famous DJs, including DJ Tiesto and uh, the Chainsmokers. But uh, kind of anywhere you turned, you saw celebrities or a famous restaurant pop up or what. Uh, pretty fun event, and it seemed like it was a nightmare for them to set up and a nightmare if you were going to visit Vegas prior to this race, but uh, everyone who kind of attended said it was well worth it. Oh, good, good, yeah, because it was a, woo, I was there, and it, the locals were not happy. They were no, not happy. I, I heard you couldn't even see the Bellagio Fountain because of some of the, the stands that they built. Yeah, it, it, was, it was rough. Brad, have a yeah, good no week. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. You too. Thanks, Jason. They, uh, we, we know a couple folks that live there, and, you know, there are kind of the, uh, the, the pedestrian bridges over Las Vegas Boulevard to connect one side of the strip to the other, and there's giant glass, uh, glass panes uh, on those walkways. Formula One had put up smoky glass um, stickers to block people from watching the race for free. Uh. The locals would rip them down in protest. <laughs> would rip down the. Oh. And I just thought, yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah. It, it just. And hotel rooms that were thousands of dollars a couple weeks ago, they were like bargain basement, even oh. the day of the race. They were going for like a hundred bucks wow. at some of the fancier hotels. Yeah. Wow. It, I don't know if this one's going to turn a profit. Yeah. More just for you now. It seems network t uh, TV networks, rather, are are still having trouble coming up with new show ideas. So they're bringing back possibly two classic shows. First up, Home Improvement. Oh. Okay. In a recent, okay, uh, I'll, I'll mark that down as mixed. Yeah. In a recent interview, Tim Allen suggested a possible spinoff focus on his three sons from the show. Now, this is just like blue sky. Nothing's official. He didn't even say he mentioned this to anybody that can make a decision like this. So, I don't know. I guess it could work. I mean, we, you know, we had full, if we had fuller house, you know, we could have home re-improvement. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, but the full house cast, they weren't in jail. <laughs> I'm like, one of the sons is in prison, and Jonathan Taylor Thomas hasn't been seen in years. So there would be one son, and they'd have to be like, this role is now played by XYZ yeah. for the other two. Yeah. It's a little less nostalgic when it's a whole new cast. And how long can the neighbor be behind the fence? Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, Wilson? Wilson. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, yeah, Wilson doesn't live there anymore. <laughs> Wilson and his wife have retired. They're in Boca. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on. Okay, so here's another reboot. How about this one? A reboot of the Dukes of Hazard. Three of the stars. Oh. 
Three of the stars <laughs> reunited for a recent Comic Con in Tennessee and said they would love to see a new version of the show uh, similar to what they did with Night Court or Quantum Leap. The actress who played Daisy Duke said a televised reunion would also be possible. <laughs> yeah, now do that. Yeah. That would be great. Look, say what you will, in the 80s, the, du the Dukes were huge. Mm -hmm. Friday night, they don't even program TV anymore on Friday nights. It's nothing but reruns and like Matlock, and that's it. <laughs> but on Friday nights, yeah. you had the Dukes of Hazard, then you had Dallas, and then you had Falcon Crest. Oh, yeah. People didn't have dates in the 80s. They just stayed <laughs> home. I mean, that's, you know, you didn't go out. I guess so. Well, I, see, my generation was TGIF. We had, like, the teen shows. Yes. So, same for my childhood, I guess. Yeah, you had uh, Family Matters, Step by Step, mm -hmm. Perfect Strangers. Perfect Strangers was a little... Before you? A little before me. I, what, yeah. What, even when I try not to age myself, <laughs> I age myself. <laughs> oh, well. Balky, remember Balky? They had a good theme song, too. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of a blast from the past, next up, it's considered one of the worst things to ever air on TV. No, not season one of this show. Oh, no. I don't want to clap. I feel bad. I'm like, do I follow the lead? Uh -huh. Actually, season two is pretty bad, yeah. What but happened? Season one was good, and then season, season two? Season one was good, and then the corporation came in oh, and, like, okay. messed it gotcha. up. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Okay. Real dish there, yeah. <laughs> the Star Wars Holiday Special is what I'm talking about. It aired on CBS in 1978 obviously trying to capitalize on the popularity of the original Star Wars that came out a year before. But this special was so nutter butters and so bizarre. It was ridiculed at the time so bad that CBS like put it in a lockbox and like you never, <laughs> yeah. Well, now a documentary looks back at this classic. Look. When 70s TV was bad, there was no description for it. world is George Lucas allowing this to happen? You intergalactic fool. Think you know about the Star Wars Holiday Special? You don't. A disturbance in the Force. A story 45 years in the making. It's, it's, yeah. So... It's called The Disturbance in the Force, and it looks how the special was made in the very first place and why it's considered so bad. Okay, well, you don't have to consider it. Just look at what we just showed you. Yeah. It's in specialty theaters now, and it'll hit digital and Blu-ray on December 5th. Fallon, I watch this because I'm, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. It is awful. Oh, awful. no. Chew you meet Chewbacca's family, <laughs> and there's like, you, you meet... You meet like Mrs. Baca, oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then like Chewie's kids. Oh, I didn't yeah. know Chewie had a family. Chewie had a family. Wow, what an absent father. Oh, he was, was off all the yeah, time. Yeah, he was yeah. out with Jeez, Han Solo, yeah. leaving his family behind to oh save the gosh, galaxy. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then for people my age, now here I am going to age myself. I have uh, uh, four words. Are you ready? Harvey Corman in drag. Uh, that's a yeah. <laughs> Harvey Corman. Look. Harvey Corman was on the Carol Burnett show, and they have him in in drag in this. Uh, B. Arthur was forced to be in this. Yes. It was B. Arthur oh. was in that. Yeah, it was. It, it truly is one of the worst things <laughs> ever put on network television. I believe you. It yeah. sounds rough. It's rough. Yeah. It's real rough, but so good. Like you watch it and you laugh. Anyway, we're gonna take a break. Go get some more coffee. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Simply one of our favorites coming up in just a little bit. Chef Yia Vang is back in the Jason Show kitchen, showing us a great alternative to turkey for Thanksgiving, plus a preview of the new season of his hit show. And we're opening up the mailbag to see what you have to say about our fast food field trip and my mystery present. That and more when the Jason Show continues. I look like he is holding me. Look at that, yeah. He's like, anyway, yeah, welcome back. Squirrels, carp, beaver, while most, 
They're <laughs> the audience is playing a game. They're, they're like, what, what do all these words mean? Mm -hmm. While most of us leave those animals and fish alone, one man is on a mission to prove you can eat just about anything. Look at this. I'm Yia Vang. My people are Hmong. We're a hill tribe people in Laos in Southeast Asia. My father fought side by side with the Americans during the Vietnam War. And when the war was over, we moved to central Wisconsin where I was raised on wild game and lake fish. Now, I'm a chef. I love to create amazing food with animals that aren't necessarily on everyone's list, but they should be because they're delicious. Mm. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Well, James Beard nominated chef and all around amazing human Yia Vang. Chef Yia Vang is back for season two of his show, Feral, on the Outdoor Channel. It begins two weeks from today, but he's here now. Audience, give it up for the great Chef Yia Vang, everybody. Hello, my friend. Welcome back. Hey man, thanks. It's really cool to be at the table. If, yeah, you're like, at the like, desk. Like we're fancy now. You're yeah. fancy. Look at you. Yeah. I mean, you deserve to be. Anyway, uh, I listed off those animals yeah. there. The audience had a reaction to each of those mm -hmm. animals. I can't believe I'm going to ask this, yeah. but let's start with beaver. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I just say that when we this were this is the part of the show where the <laughs> audience makes up their own jokes. Yeah. Can, yeah. can I just say that when we started, when we got there, like, we, I had to be mature. Yeah. Like, I, my middle school brain had to be put aside. And like, you know, Jim, he's the trapper. He's the beaver trapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's one in every friend group. Yeah. 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 Well, well, let me, no joking, uh, all joking yeah. there. <laughs> Describe, because I've I've never oh. I've never had it. Um, mm -hmm. What's the flavor profile of the beaver? Yeah. Well, you, you know that's it, the most adult way I could say that. Thank you. You know, it, it's it's really about how clean the beaver is. You know, and yeah. in the area. I'm being serious, people. Yes. <laughs> like it's it, it's the area where they you know get their food and stuff like that. And so, but you know, to be honest. Beavers freak me out a little bit because they got... <laughs> they sure freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, <laughs> they have their, like, their, like, yellow little teeth when you watch them, and you're just like, ugh. But the thing is, I'm being really serious, I know people. you are. You Lock it ahead. down, audience. Yeah. Um, but the, one of the most amazing thing about beaver is that it, um, if I didn't tell you that it was beaver, you probably think it's venison. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So what? 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 Uh, what? You know, we one of the 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 guy, the the beaver trapper, Jim. What his wife turned it into was tacos. Oh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you you disguise it. You dis I mean, not disguise, but you uh, you mix it up with other seasoning, and and, and it could yep. just be another gamey. Yeah. Is it gamey? Not really. If you know how to do it right, yeah. you know, it's it's really not. And I think people are really nervous about it. But the, the, one of the great things is learning how to, you know, like the like the hide and what they do with it. And even he gave me a hat too that was made out of beaver fur. And you know, I wear that thing around. It's awesome. And yeah, yeah and we I mean, it was such a fun fun. It was in central Wisconsin, you know, where I came from. And yeah. And you learn about the invasiveness of the beavers and what they do and how they can destroy marshland in like overnight. Yeah. Well, let's talk about and 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 this is popular in the Hmong culture. Mm -hmm. uh, a squirrel. Oh yeah, delicious, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Now here I have to make this, you know, very clear. And and I am very passionate about eating squirrels, you know. Yeah. But not city squirrels, you know, because they're eating diapers and trash and stuff yeah. like that, you know. But when you got the squirrels that are out in the woods and they're eating acorn and they they get that omega three fatty, you know, good fat in their thighs and their thick hindquarters, you know? Like, that's where I'm all about. Yeah. I can't. I just... I just... Yeah. I'm, I'm a leg man. I'm a leg man I, myself. I, yeah, you know? I know. I am too. <laughs> so, so I, we've learned a lot today, haven't we, audience? Yeah. City squirrels bad. Yeah. Country squirrels good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, let's talk about carp. Yeah. So we went into southern Illinois. This is a clip here. Yeah. 
No, I mean, you can go ahead and talk. Oh, yeah. No, 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 yeah, so yeah. Southern Illinois went there, and what we were looking for were the carps. They're called koi, uh, kopi, but, you know, sometimes it's called, uh, you know, Asian flying carps, and you, when they drive the boat across and we make a lot of noise, all the carps start flying out. And in the middle of it, the captain looks at me and goes, yeah, I didn't, you know, a few months ago, I got hit by a, on the head by one of these carp, and it, it detached one of my retinas. And while we're in the middle and these carps start jumping, I looked at our, you know, producer, and I'm like, why am I not wearing a helmet? You know, because these things are 15, 20 pounds, and they're jumping, and they'll jump right on the boat, and if you don't watch it, they'll hit you right in the face. Really? Yeah, there's so many of them, thousands of them. You see them all, like, jump up, and it's just because the engine of the boat just freaks them out. Yeah, and then you net them, and you start pulling them in, and they're incredible. What's, it like, if you to yep. were to make carp, What's do you grill it? Do you what do you do? so? So I grilled mine, but the guys who took me out they deep fried theirs. And literally, if I'll be very honest with you, if they didn't tell you it was carp, you probably think it would be some kind of lake fish, like you know, they, it's like a, a they, perch or yep, something like that. They shore lunch it, you know, they put the batter on it, deep fried. It was so delicious. Well, most anything is good fried. Yeah, I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. yeah, we have more with Chef Yia Bang after the break. Uh, when we come back, putting a new spin on turkey. Back after this, stay with us, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm joined uh, once again by our chef, our friend Chef Yia Vang. Uh, so I don't need to tell you this. There's only a few more uh, days to go until Thanksgiving, and the chef has an alternative to just roast in the bird, roast in the turkey. What are we yeah. doing? So, you know, one of the big things is like when it comes to Thanksgiving, everybody gets done eating the turkey, you know, and you have all the scraps left. Yeah. And so I just thought I, it would be a really good idea, especially how it's starting to get a little bit more cold, to do this co uh, red coconut curry with your with turkey in it. So what we done oh. is we made this uh, red coconut curry dish where basically it's, you know, garlic, onion, shallots, red coconut, uh, sorry, red curry paste, and then we threw in some string beans in there too, and some coconut, let it reduce down, and then just add your turkey in there. And then all you need is some rice and a bunch of vegetables, and then you just do this little, you know, coconut curry uh, dish, and it's real simple, very fragrant, as you can smell. You oh. Know? And yeah, and so what you do is you're... That is real good. Yeah. Just I, oh. And that, so... Because uh, you do get done with the dinner, yep. and you do have all that meat. And mm -hmm. so, how long, for instance? Because I mean, you're you're a, a fancy big time chef. How long did it? No, but I'm saying for us mere mortals. I mean, you just whip you just whip this up. Like, how long did it take you to think of this one? Well. Not that long because we do basically this same dish, uh, you know, my parents, uh, my mom does, and what we really do it with is with chicken. Oh. And so, like, the biggest thing, too, is I think that everybody always does this thing where it's like, oh, we'll eat turkey during Thanksgiving. But, like, you can eat it. Any other time, too. Yeah. It's and not a, it's, it's not just a one-time bird. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, so, like, one of the big things is, you know, I learned this from my mom. It's like my mom and dad will have turkey around all the time, you know. And especially, you know, with the hunting thing, people get wild turkey. And you can, you know, use that also, too. Well, let me ask you, because I think one of, the one of the greatest things that you do here on our show and then around and now nationally with your show is you've really opened people's eyes and hearts mm -hmm. to the, the Hmong culture, the community, your, and everything about it. And I think that's fantastic. So let me, I, I really do. I think it's been from day Thanks. one. I know for me, I have, I have an uncle who is uh, very Italian. I mean, mm -hmm. like literally swam from Italy, right, to mm. Schaumburg, Illinois. <laughs> and I was very lucky because my Thanksgivings were a great mix of traditional American things. And then my Aunt Pat learned all the recipes, made traditional Italian mm. masticcioli lasagna. What, my lead up to my question is, what is a Thanksgiving dinner? What did it look like at your house? Yeah, so we obviously have, you know, like the turkey stuffing mashed potatoes. You still, you have all that? Okay. We still do. And it's what's funny. My mom always says, like, that's like the Mika or American Thanksgiving. And then it's whatever. 
you know, on the other end. You know, sometimes we'll do, you know, fukou, we'll do, you know, we'll do some What's kind of that? curry. Fukou, which is kind of like a, a rice plate, uh, a rice crepe, and you stuff it with uh, 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 ground pork and all that stuff. Mom does it. It's really, it's a, you know, it's a dish that a lot of Hmong family makes. You know, sometimes we'll do the bao. Oh, uh, next time you're here, yeah. make that. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and then sometimes we'll, you know, we'll, we'll go all over. You know, my parents, you know, since we've been in this country, they, they have a little higher taste for the, you know, higher living. So, <laughs> hey, I figured, I figured after Dad fought a war to get us here, you know. Oh, so his, yeah. his whole thing now is Alaskan king crab. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get that for him. Like, you know, I mean, it's, it's a little like, I'm like, no. okay, Dad. Like, I, for Father's Day? Yeah. For, or, uh, for, uh, for his birthday, my father-in-law, um, who tolerates me 300 days a year, yeah. um, I make him... Alaskan, I do yep. king crab legs because yep. that's that's I so I get it. I yeah, get it. No, but we'll go anywhere from there to, you know, whatever mom wants to make. Every oh, well, a few years ago, well, I, you talk. Oh, yeah, eat yeah. this. Yeah, go ahead, thank sure. you. Yeah. A few years ago, uh, I decided to do. Uh, um, a uh, prime rib roast, and it was kind of like this fun thing I was doing. And now every year they ask for it, and so I'm like, ah, darn it, like ah. Uh. So, yeah. yeah, this is so good. Yeah. This is so good. And I'm going to eat this real quick so Fallon can't have any. So, yeah. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> Give it up for Chef Yia Bang, everybody. Okay, so don't miss the premiere of the new season right there of Farrell. It's on the Outdoor Channel starting Monday, December 4th. You can follow Chef on Instagram. His handle is Yia Bang 70. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Oh, my God, dude. This is so good. Welcome back to the show. I'm glad you're here. Um, that, that, that recipe was so good. I ate some of that in the break. Woo, anyway. What no, didn't get a bite. <laughs> <laughs> She's Don't feel fine, bad everybody. For me. She's fine. <laughs> we love to read every single message you send to the show, whether it's on social media or email or actually sometimes snail mail. So it's time to respond. It's our Monday tradition. It's the Jason Show Mailbag. Here we go. You got me. So uh, first up, a message from a uh, new viewer in one of our new cities. We're in 10 now in oh. season nine uh, from Sioux City, Iowa, the home of my uh, aunt, my Anna uh, Evie. Ellen writes to us. She goes, Jason, I'm so grateful for your show is here in Sioux City as it's truly the highlight of my day and I am spreading the word and we are all addicted. Thank Aww, you, my friend. That's so nice. Say it every time. I say it every time. It matters. It matters. You tell a friend, they tell a friend, and that's how shows become successful. So we greatly appreciate it. We got a ton of comments next up. About our latest, <laughs> about our latest fast food field trip. Now, last week our staff tried two new dipping sauces at McDonald's, and then we visited the Bucks of the Star, the Starbucks, to sample their new holiday drinks. Well, the reactions have come in. Chris in Seattle says fast food field trip is your carpool karaoke. It's hysterical and brilliant TV. More, please. Yeah, believe me. And. Lisa says, I love watching Jason as a passenger <laughs> and his reactions to Jeff driving. They're so dramatic. Yeah. I love it. Ah! I mean, I am a little bit of a backseat driver with Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew says, I love the sound effects when Jason swears. Can you do it? Can you do it more and with other sound effects, like a little car horn? Yeah. Yeah. Eric's down. Uh, Eric yeah. has it, believe yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> as we... As we say in the office, don't encourage them. Yeah. <laughs> and Christine says, I absolutely lost it when photographer Eric stuck his head out of the window <laughs> to lick his pup cup. Yeah. Because let me explain. We have an ongoing joke that that <laughs> it 
starting as the truth. <laughs> we, we keep forgetting to feed Eric at these things, <laughs> photographer Eric. Yeah. So Fallon and Jeff and I devised a plan where we would, this time, <laughs> we would get him something at Starbucks and we ordered a pup cup for him. So it was a little cup of whipped cream, yeah. And Eric is a method actor, so he leaned out the window to like eat a, it. Yeah. Like a little cocker spaniel, <laughs> yeah. Well, many of you had a lot to say about the mystery gift that I was oh. sent, that I received at my house. If you you missed it here's the gift it was from Shutterfly showing my husband and I along with our two dogs there was no return address no note no nothing so I have no clue who it's from but they obviously know my family and my address <laughs> Josie writes to us if I received an anonymous package I too would find it creepy yeah yeah Colin still wants me to take it to a church uh, Deb says <laughs> Deb says I think it was a loving gesture from a family member or friend that forgot to add a note. Okay. If so, they will do the Minnesota passive aggressive. So did you ever receive that thing I sent you? <laughs> yes. Waiting for the thank you. Uh -huh. So yeah. Jill writes, well, you know how creative photographer Eric can be? Maybe it's him. It's no, yeah. no, guys, it's too normal of a gift for Eric. <laughs> Eric sends me uh, body pillows from Bangladesh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Robin says, maybe those creepy dolls you had in studio sent the surprise gift. Mm. I mean, I don't, I still, it's been about a week. Yes. And if it was a family member or friend, would they not, I mean, first of all, how good of a friend are they? They don't watch our show. I mean, you know, I, they haven't heard me talk about it. I don't know. Well, a big response to Fallon showing us her passion and talent for painting. If you missed it, here it is. Last week, she showed us how to paint a Christmas tree. It's a hobby she picked up at the beginning of the pandemic. Teresa says, well, I've been needing a hobby. Fallon, thank you. I might just have to try this. And oh, Abby good. says, Fallon is so talented. You <laughs> Voice I know. Talented. You inspire us all to find joy in trying something Aww, new. That's so nice, Fallon. Nice, Thank you. How nice is Abby? Oh my gosh. Tanya says, sign me up for painting class with Fallon. Yeah. And, girl, she's expensive, just warning. Anyway, <laughs> and Shall uh, Shannon says, I bought a painting kit and can't wait to get it in the mail. I know I'm going to love it. Aww, Isn't that's that so nice? nice? Yes. Don't get frustrated and quit immediately. Like, you just have to give yourself some time, you know, to just keep practicing. It's like anything. Yeah. We all want to be good immediately or all want to lose weight immediately, but it just takes a little time. You so. said it took you a few months. Many, many. Still, I'm still learning, like, all the yeah, time. You did yeah, a great so, job. Thank you. Finally, a really sweet message from Naomi. She sent this picture saying, My sister is your biggest fan. She watched uh, since day one. I wanted to share her picture when we were on an Alaskan cruise, and she brought her Jason Show Aww. swag with her. Notice her sweatshirt from your online swag store. How sweet is that's that? That's so sweet. Oh my I love God, it. that's really nice. Thank you guys. Thank you all. We love getting the comments, the good, the bad. If you like our outfit, if you don't, I'm sure I'll get a comment about this combo. I mean, it can <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> Stay connected with our show on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Just search for Jason Show TV. We'll be right back. Back after this. That's very sweet. It is time for the world's shortest segment. Now, you're probably wondering, uh, you're thinking to yourself, Jason, wow, how much coffee are you drinking? Uh, well, there's a reason I have all, all these mugs on the desk. So here we go. I want to say thanks to a viewer for sending me a surprise gift in the mail. Margaret Ray from Olympia, Washington, sent me a collection of mugs. Now, Aww. it's very sweet. We love, we love hearing from our new viewers uh, in Chicago and Madison and Iowa and, and all over the place in Orlando. And this was just really special. I mean, the fact that she took the time to go, she spent a lot of good money, boxed it up. I appreciate it. Now, there's one mug missing. If she's watching, it broke in the mail. Aww. And and yeah, so yeah, I know, honey. But thank you. We appreciate it. You'll be seeing these on the desk from time to time. We'll be right back. Back after this. So nice. I know. So and it was a really pretty one, too. Aww. We'll end.
begins how we began in the cold open when I was complaining, and I'm sticking up for pet owners here, mm -hmm. uh, talking about people when you're out in a communal area with your puppy and the puppy's finally tinkling, mm -hmm. uh, don't come up with your dog and be like, oh, can Fluffy meet? <laughs> no, no. My dog is distracted. It yeah. drives me. Living yeah. in a condo, it is, and then people that don't put their dogs on leashes and then people that don't clean up after oh, your dog. Oh, that's a if whole you are, thing. Thank you, audience. Oh, yeah. If you are too lazy to clean up after your own dog, you're too lazy to have a dog. That's correct. Yeah. That yeah. is so, right. Yeah. yeah. The same. You shouldn't have a dog if you can't. It's so hard to put a, a, a bag in your pocket. Yeah. Just saying. And most places even have bags. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you can just grab them at like a dog park usually. You don't even have to bring them anymore. That's right. So clean up after your dog, put them on a leash, and leave my dog alone. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair. Fair request. Dog, Simple. Yeah. Please. Tomorrow, Stephanie Hansen is back answering your Thanksgiving day. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, they're, they're so upset they missed you. You can spend the <laughs> night if you want. Yeah, she's tomorrow. Thanksgiving long with Leslie Miller, but right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, the audience looks the same tomorrow. You'll know why. Bye, everybody. Go out there and be yourself.